What's up guys, in this video I want to talk about how restrictions look on a graph. So I got two examples here, I got x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 2, then I got 1 over x minus 2. So let's say that we were asked to state the restrictions for both of these, or maybe even the domain. So notice that the factor here x minus 2 and the factor here, they're both the same. So the restrictions for both of these is x cannot equal 2. Right? So the domain for both of these, if you remember we talked about domain, it's always x can be anything except for the restrictions. So the domain here would be the same. X can be anything, but it can't be 2. Because both cases would make the denominator equal to 0 if X is equal to 2. However, how are both of these going to look like on a graph? Well, taking this, what happens when we simplify it? Well, we would factor the numerator, which would be x plus 3, x minus 2. And then we'd have x minus 2 on the bottom there. And then notice that the x minus 2's cancel out. So we're just left with x plus 3. That's what it simplifies to. And let me put a line through here just to split these up. And when factors cancel out, what that means there is that there is a hole at that restriction, at x is equal to 2. And that happens when factors cancel out. Notice here how there was no factors that cancel out x minus 2 is just there. So what this means here is that there's a vertical asymptote. Right? So restrictions in general, if we make a little summary here, They're either going to be one of two things. They're going to be either a whole or they're going to be a vertical asymptote. And we can actually show this on a graph. So this function here, let me actually draw the graph up here. So I wrote this function here anyway. So the way this is going to look, sorry, I'm kind of going all over the place here, a little bit unorganized, but work with me. So we're, this rational expression that we were given simplifies to x plus 3. So if we graph x plus 3, that's just a line like that. But there's a hole at x is equal to 2. So at 2, there's a hole there. And notice that the domain of this, the domain of a line is just x er, but if there's a hole on the line, x cannot equal where that hole is located. And then this graph here, notice how it's just the reciprocal function shifted over 2 to the right. So we know there's a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 2. So the way that's going to look is like this. Right, so that's the difference. So here, the domain x cannot e x is a element of real numbers, but x cannot equal two. It's because of a vertical asymptote. Versus here, the domain x is an element of real numbers. X cannot equal two is because of a hole, and it's because that was a factor that canceled out. So restrictions can either be a hole. That's if factors cancel out. Or it could be a vertical asymptote if uh, no factors 
cancel out. So a restriction is always going to be um, one of those two things. And let's compare two more rational expressions before finishing off this video. So we got 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. And then we got 1 over 2x plus 1 and x minus 3. Now, sometimes these will be given in expanded form, so you have to factor it first. In this case, just to save time, I already factored the denominator for you. But again, if you're simplifying, if you're trying to figure out whether the restriction is a whole, whether it's a vertical asymptote, if stuff is expanded, you always have to factor it first. So factoring, you get this here. Notice now the restrictions for both of these are the same. So here, x cannot equal negative a half and x cannot equal 3. Same thing here. x cannot equal negative 1 half. x cannot equal 3. But the type of restriction is going to be different. Notice in this expression, the 2x plus 1s cancel out. So we're just left with 1 over x minus 3. That's what it simplifies to. And because the 2x plus 1s canceled out, we know that this restriction here is a whole because when factors cancel out, there's going to be a whole at that x value, at that restriction. And because the x minus 3 didn't cancel out, it's still there. We know that this restriction is a vertical asymptote, right? Versus here. Restrictions are the same, but nothing canceled out. We're still here with a 2x plus 1 and an x minus 3. So both of these are vertical asymptotes. There's no holes in this one. Right, and if you want to actually show this graphically or see how it works graphically, what you would do with this type of expression is you would graph the um, simplified expression, so 1 over x minus 3. That is just the reciprocal function shifted 3 to the right. So we know that there's a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 3. So it looks something like this. But what happens is at this x value of negative a half, there's going to be a hole there. And this is just going to keep going like that. Okay, so if you actually take this whole expression and plug it into decimals, this is how it would look, and there would be a hole at negative a half. So notice the domain is still xer. x cannot equal negative a half because of a hole, and x cannot equal 3 because of a vertical asymptote. But notice that the type of restriction for both of these is different. Versus if you were to graph this one, now you don't have to know how to graph this uh, function. This is the reciprocal of a quadratic. This is actually going to be in advanced functions in grade 12. You're going to be running into these. But in this grade, you don't have to know how to graph them. But I'll show you how it looks like anyway, just so you can get a visual. Basically, both of these restrictions are vertical asymptotes. So there's no holes in this case. And the way it looks is there's like a quadratic in between here. And then there's like two parts like that. So that's how this rational expression looks if you were to graph it. But what I'm trying to show my main point is that those two restrictions, they're both vertical asymptotes. Versus here, it was a vertical asymptote and a hole. Here, it's two vertical asymptotes. Now, another thing, another question that sometimes comes up is what if you have maybe, let's say, 2x plus 1 squared here and then a 2x plus 1 at the top? So notice that one of these will cancel out. So we're still left with a 2x plus 1 at the bottom, but there were two factors that canceled out. 
Well, in this case, it's still a vertical asymptote. If there's still a factor remaining there at 2x plus 1, then it's still a vertical asymptote at x is equal to negative a half, even if there was the same factor that canceled out beforehand. If there's still something remaining there, there's a vertical asymptote. But if you cancel it out and it's totally gone, so notice there's no 2x plus 1 here, then it's going to be a whole. All right, so not too bad. Basically, restrictions, they can either be a whole or a vertical asymptote. If factors cancel out and they're fully gone, then that restriction is going to be a whole. You would just graph the simplified um, expression and then just put a whole at whatever x value you got that canceled out. But if nothing cancels out, then the remaining factors, uh, the remaining restrictions in the denominator, they're always going to be vertical asymptotes.